Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we are continuing our exercises to help us get good at Blender. This time we're looking at chess pieces. Now this may feel like a slight backward step but there's some complicated aspects to them and I'm going to talk a little bit about the edge crease within the subdivision surface modifier. This is part nine, so all the other parts are in the playlist in the description. And do check out the playlist on my channel for other free courses. And if you want them in order, you can get across to my website, gabbit.co.uk. If that's not detailed enough, there's a great course by CG Boost, which I've put the link in the description. That's an affiliated link. You'll be supporting me if you click on it. But it's an excellent and very detailed course, so I can thoroughly recommend it. And lastly, thanks to my patrons and those that donate and those that watch an advert for me. It's all really appreciated and helps keep the channel going. Okay, so as usual, I'll show you the model, then you have a go. So our first model is here. Hopefully this won't be anything too complicated for you. So have a go at that. Okay, so I'll push this off to the side and start with a cylinder. It's probably worth saying as well that you could bring in a background image for this if you want to have a precise looking pawn. But as I've said before, be careful what you're searching for. So let's go to front view, scale in the Z, and just get the base. I'll bring that up slightly and put it on the floor. Into edit mode with tab, select that top face, and back to side view and move it into position. So I'm just pressing G to grab, E to extrude and scale in. So I'm just getting the shape and I'm just copying the pawn that I've already got. So E to extrude, grab in the Z and scale it out and just get the rough shape. We can do the bevels or proximity loops after we've done the basic shape. So I'll extrude this up all the way to the top here and scale it in. Then I can do Control R and do a loop cut around the middle. So Control R and double click and then scale that in to get roughly the size. And then I can Control B, move my mouse to the side and use the wheel to create a few more loop cuts. Okay, so let's grab that top face again. There's many different ways of making this really, and you might have done it slightly differently. As long as you come up with something that looks good and you've done it reasonably quickly, then there's no correct way as such to do it. E to extrude in the Z, and I'll do this one slightly differently again. E to extrude in the Z, and then I will select face mode with three and select this face loop here. And I'll extrude this, scale, shift Z, to make sure it doesn't scale in the Z axis. So I've got that top bit there and I can grab this face back to front view and extrude to the top somewhere around there. Control R to do a loop cut, scale that out to the sides there and Control B to bevel and sort of scale these up as you see fit. We might want another extrusion at the top here and scale it right in. So we've got our rough shape. We can now turn on our subdivision surface modifier over here. So subdivision surface modifier, and obviously it goes blobby because we haven't got those supporting loops yet. Now this is what I wanted to chat to you about. I'll put the viewport render up really slightly and right click and shade smooth. Now if I go to edit mode to see our topology, we can see obvious places where we need the supporting loops. So at the bottom here, for example, control R and do a supporting loop there. But if I go to solid mode a moment, you can see there is a bit of a distortion and that's because this is a big N gone and there's a curve at the edge there which may be confusing it slightly. So I'll select that bottom face, inset, and now there's no distortion. That's because this is a flat surface now, whereas before with the subdivision surface there was a slight curve there, so there was slight distortion. We'll see the same at the top probably, a bit of distortion. And if I go up the top here and put a matte cap on, with something really shiny, you can see the distortion more. And that's a good idea to use a matte cap like this if you're ever wanting to see any distortion in your shapes, especially when using a subdivision surface modifier. I'll go back up here and change it back to the studio one and back into edit mode. And we may need to select that last face and we can turn it into quads, but the easiest way is just to inset it once again and make it very small and just line it up and you don't really notice it. It's not particularly well-rounded, so perhaps we need to go into edit mode again and maybe select the middle faces, use our proportional edit tool and scale it out. But remember to press Shift Z so it doesn't scale in the Z and it's a bit more of a ball now. So there's lots of tools you can use to smarten the shape up and selecting things like face loops with Alt left click, but on one of the edges going down across the face loop that you want to select and then you can extrude it out, scale, Shift Z, and do all sorts of 
interesting topology that you want to do. But anyway, onto the supporting loops. Now we've done one at the bottom, and that's the usual way of doing it, but there are other ways, and lots of people are asking me, why am I not using them? Well, I'll introduce them to you now, but the important thing to understand about this tool is that you still need to understand the topology and what it's doing in case it goes wrong. And it goes wrong quite often, especially if you've got bad topology. So I'll show you what it does. If I go into edge mode with two and select this edge loop here, and I can go across to what's called the mean crease. If I click and drag this upwards, you can see if I deselect it quickly, Alt A to deselect, that it's turned a purple color. That means it's got a crease on. I'll reselect it so we can see that we've got a crease there as well. And basically what that's doing is instead of having to go in, and I'll do it with this one, so Control R and produce a loop cut, Control R across there for our supporting loops, it kind of calculates those supporting loops for you. So it tightens up edges. So in order to select the edge loop in here, I can come across to my cage option there. But do remember to be a bit careful with this tool because it's just a representation of where your vertices and edges are rather than where they actually are. Anyway, let's use the mean crease down here then. So I can play with this, putting it all the way out to one, and you can see the results it's giving. A slightly different shape pawn this time. So try it out, see how you get on, and maybe try it in the next few objects. So let's go to the second object. Okay, so we've got the queen this time. Have a go at that. So a slightly tougher shape this time, especially when it comes to the top here. So let's actually just bring back our pawn, and I'm going to edit the shape, then I don't have to do exactly the same things again. So into edit mode, and in order to select all the top faces, I'll go to Alt Z, which is X-ray mode, or you can press X-ray mode up here. And now I can select the top faces, although I'm in edge mode, so I'll press three on my keyboard to go to face mode and get those top faces there. Let's go to side view and roughly match up our piece to the other one. So I'll go somewhere around there and scale everything up. I've still got proportional edit on, so watch out for that and I'm just going around my shape, editing it slightly. So we need to edit the top. So I'm going to go to front view and select those top faces. And I didn't quite get this set here, so I'll press Control plus to select those as well and press delete to delete the faces. Now I can select this edge loop in here. I'll go back to solid mode, so I'll turn off X-ray mode, select this edge loop here, and I can then start extruding that out. So E to extrude and Z to somewhere around here. E to extrude again. I'll turn off proportional edit now. So I'll scale those down and E to extrude again in the Z axis. So slightly different to the top one. And I'll just press F to fill that face in. And of course this is then gone. So we've got that distortion, but I'll fix that in a bit. So let's start thinking about how we're going to do these. Fairly straightforward again. I'll go to edge mode and select this edge loop here, control B to bevel. I'll just do two, and then I'll go around selecting each face, or every other face, and I need to extrude them outwards. So I'll extrude and press S to scale. I probably don't want it in the Z axis, so shift Z to turn that Z axis off, and then G, then Z, and pull them upwards. Now if I want to change the size of any of these, I can go up to my transform pivot point options here, and go to individual origins, and then I can scale them down individually if I want to. Although they seem to look all right as they are. Now let's try the mean crease now. And we can see that works reasonably well, but there is a bit of distortion around the place. Let's turn our viewport render up, and that seems to be helping nicely. We probably want these inside edges in here as well. I'll just do one. I'll choose the cage option so I can grab them easily. I'll go to edge mode though and grab those. And again, use the mean crease. And that's doing a reasonable job. If we want to increase the creases around here, we can add another edge loop in here, add another edge loop down here, and maybe grab and bring this one down, perhaps increase the crease for that. So it's got some sort of shape like this. And you can see the usefulness and the speed of using this mean crease. But like I say, don't over rely on it because it can be a pain without understanding the topology underneath. So let's press Control R and do a loop cut here and create the ball at the top. Select this one at the bottom, increase the crease. And then look at the top, there's still some distortion, so grab that top face. I'll turn the cage off so I know exactly how far I'm going. Inset and go right to the middle. And maybe grab that and pull that upwards slightly. 
and there we go. I might want to bevel this as well. And we've got something similar that we can easily adapt and pull into shape. And it's even easier to adapt because of that mean crease. I haven't got lots of topology to change around. So selecting face loops and edge loops, scaling, maybe using the proportional edit if you need to. If you ever need to get rid of an edge loop, you select it, delete and dissolve edges. And I'm going to use the edge crease once again. And it's much cleaner and simpler on our topology as well when we're doing this. Now what you might find when you're doing this edge crease, if I select the ones around here, I'll press period key on my numpad to zoom in on these. So I've selected all the outside edges and I increase the crease to give it a sort of square look. Now what you might find is that you start getting distortion and the shape kind of bending in ways that you weren't prepared for. I'll go across to the matte cap so we can start to see it. So here we've kind of lost our flow slightly. It's not major and actually it still looks quite nice in this case. But if I start to try and sharpen other areas up around it, we can see that we do get these slightly distorted areas that look a little bit unnatural. And that's when you have to start thinking about what the topology is doing. Basically in your head you've got to be thinking that this is adding a bevel and how these bevels are going to meet each other. So that's what I mean, just be aware of those things. And if it's working then great, but when it's not working, then understanding topology, how it works, will help you a great deal. I'll leave this for now and I won't finish it, but I'm sure you've come up with some great pieces. Let's go for the last one then. Okay, so how about the king? Have a go at this one. And again, use the mean crease and see how you get on with it. Okay, so I've brought back the queen and I'll edit the shape of this one. So into edit mode, into front view, although I'll have to press control one because I've got it behind for some reason. Alt Z to go into wireframe and let's just delete the top faces maybe around here. In fact, make sure I'm in face mode with three and let's try that again and delete. Now to edge mode, select those top edges and extrude them upwards. And I've got an extra sort of lip around here so I might as well do that. Control R and then control B to bevel and then face mode extrude scale shift z and that's made that shape back to working on the top so let's select that top edge there i'm um, slightly different shape to my original but it doesn't matter too much i'm just going to extrude and scale inwards and then go to top view alt z to go back to solid mode and let's sort this out into a rectangle so i'll scale it in just a touch more probably the easiest way now is to do an auto mirror so let's go to edit Auto mirror in the X. Remember to enable auto mirror in the add ons and then in the Y, but I always choose the negative for the Y. And have a think why this is happening. It's because my mirror appears below my subdivision surface modifier. So it's subdividing it first and then it's mirroring it. I only need one of my mirrors, so I'll delete one and then add it in the Y axis there and then move it above my subdivision surface modifier and you can see it fills it in. Now back to top view. We've still got a hole at the top, you can't see it at the moment, we have got a hole there. So I'll select this edge and this edge, and then scale in the X, zero. Then these two, scale in the Y, zero. And we've got ourselves a nice square. I'll grab these two, go to front view, full stop on my numpad to zoom in, and it's actually control one because on the other side, and extrude upwards. Somewhere around there, extrude again in the Z, in fact, for now, I'm going to hide this one. It's not that important and actually go to front view so we can see our wireframe. There we go. So I've got this area to extrude out from. EZ again for the top of the cross. And for this last bit, annoyingly, I've missed an edge there. Well, I can select these two edge loops here, extrude them in the Y, select this edge here and press F and that will fill that in. Same thing here, really. Extrude this out in the Y to about there. And extrude again in the Y and then on that edge there and press F and then F again. So F is to fill and it automatically realizes that you want to fill in this empty face. Let's select these two faces and extrude them outwards and we've got a very blobby looking cross. So into X-ray mode and let's just sort this out slightly. So I've still got faces selected and I can grab and pull these things about. And it's far too wide as well, isn't it? 
Okay, so we need to shore up a few edges with some control loops or we can try to use our mean crease. So let's go around and find our edges that we need to crease. Okay, so obviously I can't continue down here, so I'll have to delete that. Circle select is the easiest way, I think. And then middle mouse button to delete them all. And let's try mean creasing. So out of x-ray mode, and let's see what we've got. It's not a bad job. It's done pretty well. But there are slight problems at the bottom here in the base. So we may need to just add our own control loop to give it a bit of support. Now if I go back to my matte cap, it's a really shiny one here. We can see that there are slight issues here where it slightly distorts the shape. That's because we haven't got any support this side, so we're getting a better result now. So although I'm using the mean crease, my understanding of topology knows that I need some sort of support in order to tighten these edges up. Hence why I keep suggesting that we need understanding of topology as well as these tools to really get them to work for us. Now I can go along and start creasing areas to sharpen bits up that I feel needed. Okay, so nothing too complicated this time, but just getting used to some new tools that we'll be using in subsequent episodes. Now, some people have asked for some homework. If you really want to challenge, uh, try the other pieces of the chessboard. The ones that are really tough are the knight and the bishop. I'll show you the bishop that I've done, and I will show you the topology as well. So you can see that I've made a cut into my shape and then I've tried to follow the edge flow around that cut. I haven't used the edge crease tool, which I could have possibly done around here, but hopefully you can get the idea of how you might go about doing it. And when you see the topology like this, it always looks a little bit easier than it actually is. <laughs> but it's well worth having a go at this and figuring out what the difficulties you're going to come up against, and then you'll be more prepared for the later episodes which are coming our way. So there we have it, some chess pieces. Do remember to let me know how you're getting on, come across to the Discord server, post your work, make sure you at Grant so I can see it, otherwise it gets lost in all the posts, or comment below with maybe a link to an image that you've done, and just generally let me know how things are going. Thanks again for all the support from everybody, and I'll see you next time.